Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, have you had enough of the angels? I haven't. Wouldn't you like to hear from them again? Yes, and I would too. So that's why I've asked Adria Estrebo to be a guest again on Energy Stew because she's such a wonderful um, medium of angels. And it's so great. And she and I go back decades uh, in friendship. And so it's wonderful to see her exploring these realms, even though she was always spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> So, Adria, welcome to welcome back to Energy Stew. Thank you so much, Peter. I'm delighted to be here, and yeah, I, I haven't had enough of the angels yet either. So, wonderful topic. <laughs> right. I don't think any of us could. And, and and I must say that very likely we're angels too, and just don't relate to it that way. Yes, you know, I I haven't delved into this too much with the angels, but they have said several times that they don't see a distinction like a hierarchy where angels are above humans and then God is then above that. So they're thinking of themselves more as brother and sister to humans. So uh, yeah, it, I don't know exactly where, where the lines are there and how we're similar and dissimilar, but I, I think it's beautiful to, to walk alongside them here. <laughs> right. And as much as they feel connected with us at that, let's say, equal level, they can access higher truths, higher understandings than we can normally. Yes, yes. And I believe so, that too. <laughs> good. But I don't profess to know everything. Right. <laughs> and, uh, I that way. I was <laughs> seems like they know a lot more than we do. <laughs> yes. I was just talking with you before about uh, a book I'm reading for uh, that I'll be interviewing about on my show uh, called Extrasensory Perception. And the author um, writes a lot about Rudolf Steiner. And it turns out Rudolf Steiner, a hundred years ago, was saying that everybody should be able to talk with angels. I think we might be coming into his time, into that vision, because uh, another thing I'm hearing a lot is about how humans are coming into their telepathic powers or that that's in our near future. So this idea of being able to talk to angels directly, I do think angels communicate with all of us in, in perhaps subtle ways, even if you don't hear their voice in your ear, you know, that little inclination to turn left or right or that, that kind of sense of peace that comes over you even in a really difficult time. There's ways that angels do communicate, but I think in that more practical, conversational way. I think that's coming for us. That's great. And I actually believe that there are different levels of higher consciousness that speaks with us, our higher selves, our spirit guides, who might be angels themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then higher angels, archangels, who don't always call themselves archangels, and you had that experience, right? Yeah. They, they just want to know his angels. <laughs> I kept trying normal. to call Raphael, Archangel Raphael, and he just says, well, you can call me that if you want, but we don't have that kind of hierarchy, so right. <laughs> angel's fine. <laughs> right. It's, you know, in the old-fashioned days, it needed to be more uh, formal, and now it's informal, really. And, and It is. Yeah, uh, delightfully so. I don't know that Raphael wants to be called Rafi. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're happy to respect his full name. Or her, her full name depends on um, how you want to look at it, because you've said before that uh, you don't like to attribute gender to them. Yes, and again, that's not something I've asked them directly, but I just don't have the sense that, that gender is, is part of... Uh, the field they're playing in, uh, not such a characteristic like it is for humans. And yet, even as humans, we've had many lifetimes where we've had, we've been living in different genders. Yes. And so we, we might only know ourselves, at least those of us who aren't transgender, know ourselves in the strict gender that we're, we, we understand. 
that we're in right now. Yeah. And yet, you know, maybe in our last lifetime or a few before, we were the, the other gender. Yes. And it's hard for many people to understand and appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's why I think the world is in disarray right now about trans transgenderism. <laughs> the, uh, a lot yeah, of if you have that wider yeah. perspective that we've all been many genders, at least two, then it's it's really not a big deal to to choose to change within one lifetime. Might be newer or less usual, but why is it a big deal if we can, if, if we switch back and forth anyway in between lives? <laughs> I, I guess you have to have a higher perspective about it. <laughs> or broader so, maybe yeah <laughs> so you you generally recently have been speaking with both Raphael and Ariel yes have there been any other angels coming through lately um not lately really the last uh few weeks pretty solidly has been Raphael and, and Ariel and the way they describe it Raphael is um kind of a generalist and also about the heart <laughs> and Ariel is about change and that we're in such a time of change now that Ariel uh, tends to pop up at least once. <laughs> in yeah, each I, th I think <laughs> for us, uh, Ariel will have a lot to say because we have a lot of good questions. <laughs> so we can start, I guess, talking with them. Uh, I know you're not a trans channel or a trans medium that you actually just kind of shift your focus and they speak through you. Yes, I'm a conscious channel. So I'll let you know who's speaking because my voice doesn't change so much. It's not so dramatic. <laughs> right, I know. Trans channelers are very dramatic. <laughs> but the, and we talked about it in the previous show, is that you know when you're being spoken to rather than thinking because you're not trying to think. <laughs> yes, and sometimes I'm I'm like that third person at the table, you know, every once in a while. I, I just, because I'm really listening to a conversation in a sense between the angel who's speaking and whoever is the client or the person asking the question. And every once in a while, my ego has this kind of funny reaction, like, well, what about me? You know, I've got something <laughs> to say, or wait, wait. <laughs> so you were sitting watching two other people talk for an hour or so. It is kind of funny being, being conscious while. <laughs> well, very, very often when I'm with clients, and I'm supposedly, you know, speaking from higher consciousness, very often they'll ask me, who's speaking? Is it Peter Roth? Or is it your spirit guides or mine or you know, angels, who's coming through? And and they don't want me to be coming through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so every me. once in a while, the ego feels a little bruised about that, really yes. not, because I'd, I'd rather uh, us hear the angels speak, but it is funny being being present at the same time as someone else's. Right, uh, and, <laughs> and it feels kind of rude, actually. It's like, you know, trust me that I, I you know, I'm tuned in. <laughs> and, uh, I know the difference. So um, there, there are a number of questions I want to ask. I, I want to start off with one that you and I discussed previously that I heard from um, a friend of mine who's also a client who is a wonderful person who undergoes a lot of ups and downs, <laughs> as we all do, and wanted to know about that and wanted to know how come when things are going good, all of a sudden something bad happens, and when things are going bad, uh, something good will show up. And, you know, it, it seems to be inconsistent, especially, I think, more of when things are going well, let's say you've had a great vacation and you come home to trouble. <laughs> And wait a minute, I just had this great vacation. I, I don't need trouble right away. Right away. Uh, so can you ask one of the angels um, what that's about? Why, why do we undergo such uh, contrasts? And this is Raphael, Angel Raphael. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the extreme of uh, example of this question. Many times you see this uh, 
being who seems like they just accomplished everything they were working towards. They just got the Nobel Peace Prize or the Academy Award or the book published or whatever it was that they had uh, strived for for so long, and then they die. And you think, oh, you feel so badly for them because couldn't they enjoy it? Couldn't they you know, embrace those good times? But understand once you have um, achieved something, that that moment is over for you in a sense. It's not that you can't stay in joy, but a lot of times um, it's not just the polarity that's underlying your world, but the fact that those heightened moments are often that recognition, ah, oh, I got there. And then you move on to a different lesson, a different challenge. And so if you were wanting stasis in this lifetime, um, you would have perhaps stayed in a different dimension when just coasting on bliss or something else. But if you came into the human experience uh, consciously so, and there's not another way to come into the human experience, people don't arrive here by accident. If you came into the human experience, you are wanting to learn and grow. And in most cases, uh, growing uh, and learning doesn't happen in this sort of stasis state of bliss and peace and so it's not that you won't have bliss and peace in your meditations and in your lifetime and for long stretches of time uh, in each day even uh, but if you remain only in that state you're not inviting in that little challenge to your worldview that little challenge to your way of thinking that uh, opens up that window, that opportunity for growth. So in most cases, these dips into challenge, into uh, annoyance, are openings for us, uh, we, which we can take or not. We can close the door and say, oh, forget it, I'm going back into meditation. Or we can look into it and say, oh, well, what is there to learn here? So it's not that we're being punished or that it has to be that way because of polarity. Polarity has to be that way because we came here to learn. It's serving us. It's not um, that we are subject to its whims. Well, it feels that way because all of a sudden there's this shift that we weren't prepared for. And then we have to rise to another level. In a sense, we are always prepared for what is coming. We, the mind might not expect it, and the mind might be sitting back on its heels and enjoying the good time. But it is true, those sayings, that uh, it's something along the lines of God doesn't give you uh, what you are not ready to receive. So this is true of challenge and of rewards of blessings. You don't receive them until you are ready because there is this great consciousness in the design of the whole experiment. Your intuition, your um, inspiration in coming into this birth, your reasons for uh, learning at this time, and then how everything in, in your world, in your universe, dances around you to help bring that about. So there's no accident here. And then there's no... Um, surprises really except to the mind which likes to believe despite uh, all evidence to the contrary that the world is linear <laughs> so the mind gets surprised <laughs> but really there are no surprises in your creation in your lifetime here and i have an understanding that our souls before we're born uh, understood the layout that we're facing in in our future life that we're born into uh, and the different issues that we will have to overcome. Yes, this is Raphael, and, and not just understand, but created those circumstances. So humans have a great deal of choice coming into a lifetime. What, what kind of learning experiences do they want to create? Which people do they want to be uh, in their universe this time around? Which gender do they wish to be, even if the, the choice of gender is in order to transcend that? So that, again, is a choice. Um, for those who feel painful for their current gender, for example, um, why did they create that moment of pain in this lifetime, if not to grow out of it, to grow through it into something 
even more beautiful, even more wise. Well, that's very positive. Good. <laughs> now, I want to ask uh, about um, tran transformation, transmutation, ascension, and a lot of people have predicted there's going to be an event, they call it the event, where we'll be hit by some very high frequencies that will lighten our way more. Do you, do you know anything about that? This is Raphael. From our perspective, uh, this event has happened already. So uh, approximately 18 months ago, there was such a shift for humankind, such a freedom where before there was bondage, that what you are in now is the time of exploring that, of learning what it is, of coming into owning in the sense of uh, feeling comfortable in the skin of your new freedom. It's already yours. So we don't see another, there, there are more openings, more portals, more windows in an astrological sense, and there will be more beings coming to the planet to help. So yes, there will be more events, there will be more shifts in consciousness. But the large event from our perspective, this sea change has already occurred. And it is in large part why so many people feel so lost right now. It's not because we are in the dark before the light. It's because it is completely unfamiliar to humankind, generally speaking, to be so free. So this is the time now of adjusting to, adapting to the freedom, which is a much easier road. It's a more confusing road because that linear um, sense of the battle of purpose uh, was easy to follow. So now when the battle has been won, when the freedom has been gained, it, it's a little confusing uh, to those who are looking for that singular purpose that they have followed over multiple lifetimes to be told now or to come into freedom where you are make, truly making the choices and not choosing between lesser evils, <laughs> so to speak, uh, where everything is wide open to joy, to growth, to any kind of experience you want to have here now, that is quite confusing to a soul that has been so limited in the sense the walls have been so close around you defining what is possible for generations. And now when there are no walls, it's very, very confusing, but that doesn't mean it's a dark time or a difficult time from our perspective. It just means quite naturally you are in chaos and confusion which creates fear and then a backlash to change of people refusing change yes but in a sense let's stay with this metaphor this is Raphael of, of walls which were there which now are no longer there if out of fear people are going to turn to the rubble and, and try to hold on to a few of those rocks that's all right. It's a natural response, but it doesn't mean they're going to erect that same tall wall. So you don't need to be in fear of going backwards. Uh, humanity collectively is not going to go backwards because of this fear response. Uh, but it does get less and less over time, the fear, as people test out the new boundaries or lack of boundaries and see what this new way of being feels like. Um, then the fear becomes less and less as the demonstration of, is there of what is this time? How is it different? So conceptually, we understand again how it's confusing for those who have been expecting an event that looks like a blinding light and the angels visible before them and, and a, a, a scroll that says, here's how it works now and, you know, step this way. <laughs> it doesn't look like that. It doesn't fit no, that old doesn't. concept. <laughs> But it's much, much better than that, let's say it that way. We are usually quite neutral, but we, we must be on the side of believing <laughs> this is a better reality for well, humanity uh, because it is so evidently so. That's great. Now I want to ask about a new technology that's coming into our lives called 5G. And yes. many people are frightened about that. This is Raphael. Uh, 5G, in a sense, doesn't fit in the new paradigm. So it is destined to be short-lived, we would say. Um, 
it just doesn't the old ways don't hold on for very much longer here and from our perspective again we're not in time so we can only say this generally but it, in the next five years or so uh, these old harmful technologies or we would say um, irrelevant technologies just fall away because when you have telepathy for example when you have other ways of communicating it's ridiculous to need all of these wires and radiations <laughs> they're just uh, improbable and unnecessary so they do fall away that's great now i want to ask about et's <laughs> and you know it's controversial and most people think you know ufos and et's are you know everyday things and there are a lot of ETs among us, and uh, maybe there'll be big arrivals happening, disclosures. So what's the story on that? <laughs> this is Raphael. So here is the beauty of this new time you are in. Uh, each human here will have a choice. So there are some among you who are very, very, um, delighted with the idea of conversing with species from other planets. So for those people, that reality will come into focus, even to the point of intergalactic cities where different types of beings can interact and learn from each other. From those to who that feels very threatening and they do absolutely do not want to encounter anyone other than humans and perhaps dogs and cats and birds in this lifetime, that will also be presented as an option. So it will not be the same visible reality for everyone on the planet. You will have a choice if you wish to interact with these beings or not. That's fascinating. I wonder how that manifests because you would think that you know, what I can interact with, everybody will realize. The freedom is there, this is Raphael, for everyone to interact uh, with all of these beings. But again, the freedom is there for any of you to close the door to any of these experiences. You can't close the door to freedom, but you can close the door to experiences and growth. Interesting. That, how that manifests is a curiosity to me because I can't imagine that we can live in separate worlds like that uh, when, when there is disclosure and, and uh, we can actually interact with different species from different planets. This is Raphael. This is not exactly the answer to your question, but the best way we can answer it right now even now there is disclosure of uh, landings uh, in the last 20 years, 100 years, but then there, most of the population assumes that is uh, false, that that is just some strange story someone made up. Right, and it's like so crop circles. Have that. Yes, but it, will be, it, it won't manifest exactly that way, but you can, you can already perceive that it's possible to hear someone say something and just fully disbelieve it. <laughs> so that's part of what happens. Okay, and that makes more sense to me. But it, it'll happen in ways that their disbelief will prove it, itself out to them. Yes, it's not meant, all of this change in openness is not meant to be threatening to anyone. So out of compassion, those that want to keep themselves in an experience that looks more like the three-dimensional world they're used to, will have that choice, will be allowed to live in that comfort and that safety of the known. Right, good. And so there's so many different questions <laughs> that I, I keep coming up with um, because we're, we're in such a distorted time of truth where truth is being challenged by so many people. And there's a lot of corruption and greed that's rising in our government and with others and um, and people aren't clear most so many people uh, if you know, more than 30 percent of our, the population of our country buys into lies what does that say about their own discernment 
This is Raphael. Is the question about what is truth or how is humanity being duped so much? No, it's more that there are a lot of people who don't want to see the truth. And I think maybe because they're holding on to the past so much that they're afraid of change that truth might bring. From our perspective, this is Raphael, this um, misperception, there's a history here of humans being tampered with, let's say, their perception of their own abilities being tampered with. So there's a long, long standing history here. So from our perspective, then, humanity is now coming out of this time of believing false realities that are told to them. And it's, again, a reason why it's a little bit of a chaos time where people don't quite know what to believe because the old lies they've been told don't really make sense. But they don't yet perhaps have the evidence in their own life to believe something new or different yet either. So it's why you could have so much questioning even in the press or in the mass media um, the dialogue is there what is true why is this person saying this and instead of everyone just believing it and going along and not questioning so you can see already the the cracks the huge cracks there in the willingness to just go along with what people are being told that's the old way so it's a strong habit but already there's those large fault lines in that habit. Right, but I like what you said about it's a habit, and they don't want to break that habit. Uh, we are really at the end of the show, Adria Estrabu. <laughs> Can you tell people how to find you? Sure. My website is wingsound.com, W-I-N-G-S-O-U-N-D. And there's a lot of angel messages there, auditory and written blogs and other fun things. <laughs> That's great. And they can contact you through that site. Yes. yes. Wonderful. Adria, thanks so much for being a guest again on Energy Stew. I hope we can have you back again with more questions. My pleasure. I'd love to. Yes. Thank you. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at PRN.FM. I can be reached at peter at heartriver, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you, and thanks so much for listening.